In today's topic, we'll mainly focus on the unified IP audio solution technical part. And let's embark on the journey together as we explore the unified IP audio solution configuration. Okay, and today's training mainly focus uh, in the following contents. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, please let's review the overall solution together uh, in a fast way. And in addition, I will uh, have a session about the software installations, the system configurations, and the endpoint configuration, uh, this kind of uh, a demonstration. And I will also show you how to use the uh, IP Audio Dispatch Console tool. <clears throat> Okay, first, uh, let us have a quick review of our IP audio solution so that uh, all those who didn't attend the session yesterday can also understand it very well. Okay, the IP audio, uh, IP audio solution uh, provides an uh, IP-based uh, communication system containing both software and hardware com components. And it primarily operates on the standard C protocol while also integrating the MQTT and the streaming media technologies. And by using our solution, our users could achieve some features such as broadcasting, uh, telephony, paging, intercom, and background music, these kind of features. Uh, furthermore, uh, we could check on the topology on the left side. Uh, in our solution, we use an uh, architecture consisting the SIP server and the SIP clients. And our IP audio center serves as an uh, SIP server and playing a very central role uh, to allow all the endpoint devices to register on it at the SIP clients. And these endpoint devices come in uh, various forms, including the uh, SIP speakers, SIP incomes, and uh, even the SIP phones and uh, SIP paging gateways. Uh, in terms of the software uh, parts, uh, we got uh, uh, software for uh, desktop and the mobile uh, for commanding some basic features for all of the endpoints. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. And in this picture, uh, it shows how this solution will work and uh, it tells the relationship be before the different roles. And first of all, as the core of uh, the whole solution, our IP audio center serves as the SIP server, uh, and it let all the SIP endpoints to redress on it. And our IP audio center will manage them. Uh, and uh, this part is generally the responsibility of the administrator in your company. And at the same time, an uh, API interface is provided to the IP audio dispatch console. It will allow uh, the operator uh, to perform some basic features uh, for all of the uh, SIP, uh, SIP clients. Okay, and this page shows uh, all the products main, uh, mainly provided for Zagos IP audio solution in 2024. And you will see we provide IP Audio uh, Center with the software version and um, appliance version. As for the SIP clients, we provide you the SIP indoor speaker, SIP, SIP outdoor speaker, SIP uh, safety intercoms, SIP microphone console, and SIP paging gateways. And we also provide you three types of software for free to enhance your uh, operational efficiency. Okay, based on uh, these functional points, that goes solution will always appears in different industries. From healthcare, hotel, retail, to education, manufacturing, or the public transport. We try our best to provide you a high quality customized solutions to fulfill customer uh, customers' needs. Uh, no sound. Uh, you could connect your uh, your audio device. I think. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> uh, as we uh, have just outlined the framework of our unified IP audio solution, uh, it's time to zoom in on the critical first step. 
uh, software uh, installation. Uh, let's dive into the uh, software components, ensuring a solid base for our journey ahead. Okay, the self first software is our IP order center. Um, just like what I said, it's the core of the entire solution. And we provide you different installation methods for you uh, to recommend a suitable one for your customers who is facing different situations. For example, if your customer wants to install the system manually, they could uh, use our software version uh, to install in their uh, center or cloud server, um, or even in the virtual machine. <clears throat> Or you can also recommend uh, our IS-1200, which is the hardware server device with a built-in system. And it will provide you a fast way for the deployment. It's very suitable for the customers uh, who want to save their time and their effort. OK, <clears throat> let's move on. Okay, and in this page, uh, two installation methods are mentioned for our customers who want to install it by themselves. The first way is that uh, you can uh, they can use the download link we provide for them to download the ISO file, and then they need to create a bootable USB drive and insert it into the server uh, to install the IP audio center step by step. And the second way is to use our Docker technology to use the code they provide uh, for, uh, for an online installation. And the above two installation methods uh, have specific tutorial documents. And we also got the technical support team to assist with them. So I think the installation will never be a problem for our customers. <clears throat> Okay, and next is the installation method of several uh, operating softwares. Uh, the first one is the Dispatch Console and the uh, ICAD tool. They both support Windows and the Mac OS system. So you could only uh, go to the Zyko official website and you can find the installation file on the uh, download page. And you could just download it and install it just like the installation method of some uh, ordinary software is very simple and easy. Uh, and the second one is the mobile application, our IP Audio Dispatch, uh, Dispatch app. And you could find it on both uh, Google Play or Apple Store, and you could just download it and install it uh, very, <clears throat> very easily. Okay, now, uh, as we have uh, successfully installed the uh, uh, software components for the Unified IP Audio solution, and I think it's time to move on to the next phase, uh, the quick setup of the IP Audio Center. Uh, it will ensure a smooth tran uh, transition from the installation to the uh, operation. Uh, first of all, for the customers who want, uh, uh, who have just installed the IP Audio Center, uh, I think they need a quick setup on the system so that they could use uh, the features of the whole solution as soon as possible. And the first step, uh, you need to open a browser, right? Such as the Google Chrome, the administrator needs to enter the system's default IP. And uh, um, for the, uh, such as the IS-1100, uh, the one port IP is the 192.168.1.100. And the LAN port will be the 192.168.10.100 to log into the WebGUI. And uh, let me show you, uh, here I have uh, entered the, IP Audio Center's address in the uh, address, <coughs> address box. And uh, uh, here I have modified the default IP. So uh, for this demonstration, the IP address of the IP Audio Center will be uh, 12 
And here uh, we could see the uh, login page and it uh, it tells you to enter the uh, admin, uh, the username and the password and the both of them uh, are admin, ADMIN by default and uh, you enter them, you could log in, uh, log in here. <clears throat> And after you have uh, uh, logged in and you will see the dashboard here. <clears throat> and here you will see the system, the storage information, and uh, you will also see the CPU usage and the memory usage. And here you will see the uh, license info. Uh, that means uh, uh, if you want to, uh, if you have purchased the a license for your IP audit center, you could just click it and uh, you could click here to upload your license. Uh, you could get it from your uh, uh, the sales team. Okay, let's move on to the uh, next step. Uh, after we have successfully logged into the IP audit center, uh, now we can see the uh, uh, the, the dashboard and the navigation of the IP audit center. And uh, next in the new system, uh, we want to control and command some uh, SIP endpoint devices, right? Such as you want to register the SIP stickers, uh, SIP intercoms, or the SIP phones on it. Uh, so I think in this step is very necessary uh, because it will allow these uh, new endpoints to register. Uh, to the IP audio center first. And uh, in this step, we need to create some SIP accounts on the IP audio center uh, and set the registration credentials for them. And then these endpoints uh, can register to the IP audio center according to the same credential in information. Uh, and in this step, we just need to focus on how to create the SIP accounts on the IP audio center side. And as for uh, how to set up on the endpoints, uh, we will talk about it later. Uh, so let me have a demonstration uh, for this step. Uh, let's go back to the IP audio centers page and uh, we could click the audio devices and uh, you will find the uh, SIP accounts. <clears throat> and here you could click the add button or the dog add, add button uh, to create uh, credentials for, for the end, uh, endpoint devices. And uh, for today's demonstration, I want to register uh, three different endpoints, uh, one speaker, one uh, uh, see, uh, paging gateway, uh, one uh, microphone console, uh, one intercom, uh, okay, and uh, here I click the bug uh, bug add button, and uh, I want the start number is from uh, nine thousand, and the amount I want to make it as three. <clears throat> uh, the password, uh, I just said one two three four five uh, for for demo. <clears throat> And if you want to enable the video call, you could enable this, this setting. And for the audio codecs, you could let them uh, just let them as default. The transport protocol, I will set it as UDP. <clears throat> and uh, then you could click the sum, uh, submit button to we'll save these settings. And uh, you will see uh, three different SIP numbers um, uh, have been uh, completed, uh, created. <clears throat> and then you could uh, click the apply button to save these settings. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next step. <clears throat> okay, after you have uh, creating different uh, zip accounts, and uh, for the next step, you need to define uh, different device type for for these accounts. <clears throat> uh, for uh, okay, let me have a demonstration for the detailed information. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, first of all, you need to find the audio devices, devices, and you go into this page and you could click the add button. <clears throat> Okay, first of all, I want to uh, demonstrate for uh, intercom device and uh, you could select the tab as, as intercom device. And uh, the for the SIP number, I want to uh, set it as 9000 and I want to give it a name as uh, EIW5. And uh, for these two, uh, two, uh, two options, the first one is the active push option. Uh, that means if your uh, center and the cameras are on the same network, uh, uh, there will be uh, no need to enable this option. And about this, uh, this option allows the PA. It, it means uh, if you enable this option and the device can be called in real time. Uh, I enable this this option, and uh, if you have just some uh external cameras, and uh, you could uh, connect it with them. Uh, for now I didn't um address uh, any cameras, so it's blank here. <clears throat> so after checking this information, you could click the submit button. <laughs> Okay, and next I want to uh, create a paging device for for my IC IC fifteen, and uh, I want to set the SIP number as nine zero one, and uh, okay, check checking this information. Click submit. <clears throat> oh, and uh, next I want to. Uh, set my M100 as an IP phone, and I want to uh set it as 902. Okay, <clears throat> after uh completed setting this all, and you could just click the uh apply button to save these settings. Okay, and uh, you, if you want to add an uh, external camera, uh, such as the uh, high vision camera or the Dahua camera, you can just uh, click the uh, uh, camera button. And uh, here it shows the RTSP address. Uh, and uh, I think you will find the RTSP address uh, uh, in the uh, devices menu. And after you fill in this address, uh, you could just click the submit to add an uh, add a external camera. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the next step. Uh, after the registration uh, uh, related configuration is completed, uh, now we could uh, proceed to the next step. Uh, because you know we have the graphical operating software, the dispatch console, uh, to pro to operate in a convenient way. Uh, therefore, in this step, the administrator uh, of the IP audio center should create the dispatch console operator accounts, uh, so that the accounts uh, can be uh, allow, uh, located for different steps in some real scenarios. So let me show you how to configure it. <clears throat> uh, first of all, let us find the uh, settings, the dispatch console users. <clears throat> and here you need to click the add button to add some uh, new users. Here I want to add a new uh, account called Kenny and add that uh, password as uh, one, two, three, four, Five six, and uh, I left the address and the phone number as blank, and uh, you could also set the permission of this uh, dispatch console user, uh, such as if you want uh, this uh, user uh, to use the intercom feature, you can uh, just uh, check it. 
And the next one is the access level. <clears throat> Uh, here we got uh, level one to level twelve, <clears throat> uh, and uh, level one is the highest level. Uh, higher level users could override the actions of the lower level users uh, operation. So here I just set it as one, and the next one is the group management. <clears throat> uh, for this uh option. Uh, we could ignore it for now, and uh, I will set it in the next step. And the next one is the IP phone number. Uh, here you need to set the main control phones for the operator to use, uh, such as I could set the M100 I just uh, registered uh, as my master phone. And for example, if you want to have a paging, right, you want to uh, page to the IC15, and uh, you must need something to speak, right? So, uh, after this, uh, you complete this setting, you could just use the M100 microphone, uh, to talk, uh, to page with the, uh, IC15. <clears throat> okay, and the uh, next setting is about the uh, ring strategy, and uh, if you, that means if you, uh, set Mm, multiple IP phone, uh, multiple master phones, and uh, you could set here uh, as ring them all or uh, linear ring them. Okay, and the next one is the ring duration of, uh, of the strategy. Okay, and uh, let me check them out. Okay, click the submit button to save the settings. Okay, and I think we could move on to the next step. <clears throat> okay, and in this step, I want to create some uh, device groups. Uh, this is the step I just ignored in the last step. And a group can, can be an area or it can be a type of your business, uh, such as you could set uh, one group as Office A and set another uh, group as Office B. And uh, an operator can be selected to control this group. And uh, uh, and finally, you could select different endpoint devices to join into different groups. And by the way, one dispatch console user can manage multiple groups, but each, groups, uh, each group can just only be managed by one dispatch console user. So let me have a demonstration for you. Uh, first of all, we need to find uh, all the devices and you will see the groups. Click the groups. And here I click the add button for a, a new group. First one is the group number. I will use the uh, 6001 and the name I want it to be a uh, Kenny's group. And as for the dispatch console user, uh, you could click the job list and uh, select the Kenny I created in the last step. And for the paging mode, if you want to uh, a single side paging, uh, you could uh, select it as the simplex. But if you want to uh, make a two-way communication, you need to uh, set it as the duplex mode. <clears throat> and in the next, uh, you need to select the devices into this group. Now here I take the intercom, the speakers, and uh, I'm a hundred uh, microphone console and click submit to save this group. Okay, and uh, this step are the uh, main settings of the IP audio, uh, IP audio center. <clears throat> and after the setting is set up, uh, please let me, uh, yeah, please let us take a look at um, on each endpoint devices configuration. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, and the first step, uh, just like the uh, IP audio center, you need to log in to the library of each device, right? Uh, when the endpoint devices has been connected to your network, uh, it will obtain the IP address uh, by default through the DHCP, right? So if you want to check the IP address of each devices, uh, there are two ways. The first way is you could press and hold the reset button for about uh, five seconds. Uh, or if you have a lot of devices, you could use our uh, SAD tool uh, uh, to check the IP address of these uh, devices. Is um, Let me answer one question. Uh, is the dispatch IP phone mandatory? Uh, I think if you want to use uh, the intercom feature or the paging feature, uh, the IP, the master phone is mandatory, I think. But if you want, uh, just use some uh, background music feature, uh, uh, and I don't think you uh, need an IP IP phone. <clears throat> okay, and uh, let's continue. <clears throat> uh, let's let me show you the uh, login step of the endpoint devices. Uh, here I have entered the uh, IP address of the EIW5 and uh, I enter the same username and uh, password. Both of them are admin tool and uh, I could just uh, log into the <coughs> EIW5's web grid. And uh, you will see the DS information page. It shows the uh, SIP status uh, device information, you will see the device module, the hardware version, software version, uh, this kind of information. <clears throat> okay, and uh, uh, first we can test uh, whether the device components are working functionally on the text page, I think. Uh, can you share the video? Okay, okay, sure. Uh, I will share you after this session. <clears throat> Uh, let me demonstrate. Uh, have a demonstration. <clears throat> First of all, you need to click the maintenance, and you need to find the uh, find the test. And uh, for the EIW five, you will see uh, the speaker test, uh, the microphone loop test, and the relay test. And uh, mm, Let's talk about them one by one. The first one is about the speaker test. Uh, that means if you click the start test button and your uh, EI will play a, a sound to make sure uh, it, uh, it works well. And the next one is about the microphone loop. Uh, that means if you click the button uh, and you speak to the EIW file, if your uh, yes, speaker, uh, give you a loop back. Uh, uh, that means your microphone uh, works functionally. And uh, the next one is about the relay. Uh, that means if, such as you connect uh, alarm button with your uh, EIW5 and you click the test button. And uh, if the alarm light uh, will flash, uh, that means um, uh, it could work functionally. <clears throat> so uh, this is a way to test your co uh, device's components. And uh, we could move on to the next slide. <clears throat> uh, it shows you how to change your IP address of your endpoint devices, uh, such as uh, you want to use the static IP, you could uh, check the system network page. <clears throat> and here you could set your access tab uh, from HTTP to HTTPS or uh, both of them. And you could also set a network mode from DHCP to a uh, static IP. And such as uh, here, I uh, take the IP address as 12.50 and uh, you could uh, I did the sub, uh, subnet mask, gateway, DNS, this kind of network parameters. 
Then after you have setting the IP address, uh, we could uh, have a safe registration onto the IP audio center in this step. Uh, let me show you how to do it. We could uh, find the SIP settings on the left navigation bar, and uh, you will see the primary SIP account, the secondary SIP account, one and two. And uh, here I will sh uh, show you in the primary SIP account. Uh, and you will find a lot of settings here. And first of all, of all is the SIP server. <clears throat> uh, first of all, let me go back to the IP Audio Center's page. And uh, I will copy this uh, at the center's address is 12.147, right? And the next one is the C port of the uh, zip server. By default, if you are using our IP audio center, uh, the C port will be uh, 5060. And the next one is about uh, uh, user ID. Uh, for the EIW5, I remember that I want the uh, uh, same number uh, you, you used the uh, 9000 and I just uh, set 9000 here. And for the authentication user and domain, uh, you could left them as blank. And the next is the password. Uh, in the IP Audio Center, I set the password for 9000 is 123456, right? <clears throat> uh, by the way, uh, if you are using the uh, third party uh, SIP server, uh, which is uh, no need to use the password, so you could uh, 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 left it as blank. Uh, uh, left it bl blank here. But if you are using this our IP audio center, uh, you must uh, enter the IP uh, the password of your SIP account. <clears throat> and for the transport for the night mode and uh, uh, auto answer option, I will left that uh, by default. And the next one is enable integration with the Zyco IP audio center and uh, I will enable it. And the next one is uh, activate this SIP account. And I click the submit to save the settings. And next I will go to the uh, device information to track the uh, registration status. Uh, uh, here I will, uh, I will see uh, the primary SIP accounts uh, registration status is uh, green, the registers and uh, idle, right? <clears throat> so, uh, and you will see, uh, check it in the uh, register status. Uh, you will see the IP address of the yeah, W5 is 12.50, right? <clears throat> Okay, and uh, I need to uh, set the uh, primary SIP accounts on the, uh, on the IC15 and uh, M102. <clears throat> As for the IC15, I need to set the uh, same number as 901. Okay, and click. I click the submit and check the IC fifteen's registration status. Okay, success. Uh, and uh, I need to uh set the uh, I'm a hundreds uh SIP accounts as nine uh, nine oh two. Right, let me check, yes. Okay, let me have a double check on the IP audio centers, redress treater status interface. 
Okay, all of these uh, endpoints have successfully registered on our IP audio center. And you will see the IP address and status in the register status uh, of the IP audio center. <clears throat> Let me check the questions. Can the IP audio center be, uh, be HTTP right as, uh, yes, by default, uh, your IP audio center will be HTTPS. Uh, when to use uh, an ATL option? Uh, I think if you want, uh, uh, you don't want to use your uh, solution in your uh, lo local network, you need to enable the uh, net option, NAT net option. <clears throat> uh, you could uh, turn the NAT mode as ST1. Uh, turn or as this kind of uh, uh mode as supported. <laughs> okay, let's uh just move on to the next slide. <clears throat> uh, uh, you could also use uh TCP, uh, but by default I will use UDP because it um it, uh, it will uh use uh uh not too much bandwidth i think <clears throat> okay let's move on to the utp supported by doe uh i don't think so utp is supported by poe <clears throat> uh uh, let's move on to the next setting first. And uh, our settings can greatly improve the functionality of the endpoints. And different devices have different expansion ports, right? Such as the uh, dry contact interface or the digital inputs or the uh, switch quality uh, interface. But generally, the setup method of different endpoint devices is the uh, is the same. And let me show you first. Uh, here I will take an example. Of, uh, example for the EIW five. <coughs> uh, I need to uh, click the advanced, and uh, you will find the IO settings. Uh, here you will see the key settings, uh, the sensor settings, and the relay control settings. I will uh, sorry, uh, can you guys hear me? Uh, you could hello. Yes, we can. Yes, hear we you. can hear. You. Yes, we can. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, let's continue. You you will see the key settings, uh, uh, sensor settings, and the relay control settings. <clears throat> and uh, let's talk about them one by one. And first of all, for our intercom, uh, for our EIW5, it got two. Uh, let me open my camera. You will see the you will see the device. Okay. Uh, let me try. Okay. <clears throat> and you will see the EIW five. We got uh, uh uh two key settings. The key one is for the uh key button on the EIW five, and the other one is uh, uh configure for the wave to call. And here you could set the button for outgoing call and set the destination uh, for the uh, 9003 uh, is the uh, zip account of the M100, right? So I could just submit and test it. Uh, that means after I press the pressing the button, uh, a call will be established to the M100. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
902. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's not 903. <clears throat> Okay. Hello. Okay, be like this. <clears throat> uh, uh, here you need to set the uh, 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 cons of the uh, of the other side. <clears throat> Okay, and uh, you could also set it as the HTTP request. That means if you uh, want to use the API, you could um, copy the different API here. And after you pressing the button, the, the API will be uh, will be run automatically, such as the, uh, if you set it as the uh, background music, uh, the, the audio playback, uh, of API, uh, after you press this button and uh, the sound will be uh, be played. <clears throat> or you can just uh, set it as the uh, play audio setting. You could set different audio files and uh, you could set uh, a repeat time. And uh, this is the settings for the keys. And for the view to call action is the same. Outgoing call, HTTP request, and uh, play audio. Uh, these three options. <clears throat> and the next one uh, is about sensor. <clears throat> uh, sensor that means if you connect uh, such as small detector, right? Uh, connected with our EIW five, and uh, you you will find. Uh, trigger mode as falling edge or the rising edge. Uh, that means uh, if uh, if your small detector uh, is triggered uh, by the rising edge or the uh, uh, or the falling edge, uh, it will uh, trigger an alarm uh, or uh, dial number to the related uh, people such as the guard or the manager. Uh, if you enable the dial number and uh, you need to enter the uh, SIP number of the uh, remote side, such as 901, 902, uh, that means uh, if your de a small detector is triggered uh, and this call will be uh, automatically uh, dialed to the M100. And for the trigger audio, that means uh, if you enable this setting and uh, the uh, the ring will be automatically played. Uh, we can call to endpoints uh, also from station. Yes, you, you could do that. Uh, you could do that on the IP audio center, uh, uh, IP audio dispatch console, or you can just set uh, uh, different buttons on your M100. I will show you later. <clears throat> and the next setting is about the relay control. The first one is uh, triggered by input signal. Uh, this setting means uh, if you uh, you are using a sensor and a relay control, such as uh, you are using a small detector and a uh, alarm light in the same time, uh, you could enable them uh, in the same time. That means uh, if your sensor is triggered and uh, your relay control will be uh, triggered too. And the sensor's uh, uh, signal is the input signal. <clears throat> okay, the next one is triggered by the DTMF signal. Uh, that means if I enable this setting and uh, I set it as uh, one asterisk, <clears throat> and uh, 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 such as uh, mm, I use the M100 uh, to have a call uh, to the EIW5, and uh, I want to uh, trigger eiw 5s DTMF, uh, signal, uh, I just need to uh, press the uh, one asterisk and the DTM signal will be uh, given to the 
uh, yeah, W5. And the next one is triggered by call status. It means um, the yeah, W5 will be triggered by different call status, uh, such as the incoming call. That means uh, if your yeah, W5 receives an incoming call and the relay control will be uh, activated. And uh, you could set the different relay status for your alarm lights or the uh, door magnet, uh, such as for door magnet, you need to set it as on. And for uh, different uh, modes of your uh, alarm lights, you could set it as fast flashing or slow flashing, this kind of feature. <laughs> okay, and uh, this is the IO setting about the EIW5. <clears throat> Okay, next, I want to show you how to set up the uh, multicast feature. Uh, I will use the EIW5 uh, for an example. You will find the uh, advanced uh, multicast page on the left navigation bar. <clears throat> and here you could enable the multicast and uh, you will uh, you could set the multicast here, multicast address here. Uh, I set it as uh, 239.168.12.1 and uh, you could uh, set the specific uh, multicast port such as 2000. Okay, and uh, after setting this, you could click the uh, submit button. <clears throat> and then I want to uh, uh, em enable this multicast feature, feature, right? So here I need to go to the M100 uh, vibrate and I need to go back to basic settings, uh, button settings to set a, uh, Specific specific button, such as I want to set it as any uh can you multicast, <clears throat> and here you need to set actions as uh the multicast, and you uh too long sorry, <laughs> just can you. Ask A E N. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, you you could use the uh M one hundred for multicast uh, paging or background music playing. Uh, first of all, please let me show you how to use the multicast paging. And here you need to uh enter the multicast address of the yeah W five. Uh, dot twelve dot one yes, and check the port number. Two thousand and the codec you could select it as MP three by default, <clears throat> and you could just click the submit and uh, enable this button. And next, let me show you uh how to do it. <clears throat> uh, you can check on the uh camera screen and uh, I could. Uh, click the uh, KN button, this one. Hello, 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 guys. Hello guys. And uh, a, a fast paging will be sent to the uh, EIW5. Okay, that's the multicast. Or you, uh, you could also set it as the playlist or the uh, audio file. It's the same. Uh, let me show you how to use the playlist. Uh, you could set the playlist uh, you created before and you could set the play times. Uh, for zero is the uh, loopback, uh, loop playback. 
and uh, you need to enter the same uh, multi address and the same port for it. <clears throat> Okay, and you could just click the submit and uh, the uh, multicast background music playing setting is uh, completed. <clears throat> okay, that's uh, some basic feature uh, on the endpoint devices side. And for the ne uh, next part, I will show you some um a main feature of the our IP audio dispatch console. <clears throat> okay, first of all, uh, after you have downloading and installing your dispatch console, um uh, uh, we need to use the dispatch uh uh dispatch console user account created on our IP audio center to log in. Do remember I have created the uh, uh, can you uh, account in the previous step? Uh, here, let me have a demonstration. I opened the IP Audio Dispatch Console window and uh, I entered the IP address of our IP Audio Center because uh, this address needs to be uh, the same with your IP Audio Center. Uh, and I said, uh, uh, dispatch uh, console account as Kenny and the password will be 123456. And just log in and uh, you will see the uh, the groups you have created before. It's the uh, Kenny's group and you will see our M100, our EIW5 and IC15. And uh, here for the uh, main interface of the IP audio console, you will see uh, it con uh, contains the, uh, such as call, the uh, bar split, uh, monitor whisper, this kind of uh, uh, IP PBX feature. And uh, you will also use the play paging alarm uh, volume, this kind of uh, public address features. Uh, okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, first of all, please let me uh, show you how to use the paging and uh, intercom because uh, this kind of feature are the uh, most important feature in the IP audio dispatch console. Uh, here is, uh, uh, there is a, a tips. Uh, if you want to choose all of these uh, devices in a group, you could double click this uh, group and all of them will be selected. Okay. And first of all, I will uh, demonstrate on, on paging. I select the IC15 and uh, if I, I click the page button, uh, a call will be uh, sent to our master phone, which is M100. Let me show you. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Just like that. <clears throat> okay, and uh, next is the uh, intercom, and uh, we select uh, EIW5. Uh, for for example, uh, I click EIW5 and click the intercom. Hello. Hello. Yeah, just like that, it works uh, functionally. <clears throat> okay, that's the intercom and the uh, uh, paging feature in the public address scenarios. Uh, such as you could use this feature in the, uh, some commercial scenarios, such as the uh, shopping mall or the uh, hospital. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the next. Page. Uh, the next one is the background music playing function and the uh, alarm function. And uh, let me show you how to do it. Uh, first of all, you need to go to the music module on the left navigation bar. 
and uh, you need to uh, go to the music collection. Uh, add the little button. And here you could uh, click the uh, drag and drop uh, file here, or you could click the uh, the button to upload your uh, your music. Okay, the Radio Gaga music file has been uploaded successfully, and uh, now you could check them in this uh, music collection. And you could also use the TTS. Uh, the text to speech feature, such as I want to say hello, and you could uh, just tap them and click the convert button. And uh, give it a name, hello TTS. And click submit, and uh, the hello TTS will be uh, created uh, into the music collection. Or you could use, uh, use the uh, recording feature. Uh, to record some messages messages on your computer by yourself. Okay. Where after does, you... where does the audio stores? Is it in the server? Uh, you mean the, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. After you have uh creating this uh, music collection, and uh, you need to go back. Uh, go to the music player page and uh, you could class uh, uh, click this create button to create some uh, new playlist uh, such as uh, sorry yeah my goodness. and uh, uh, I will uh, choose some music. Okay, and here the Kenny's um, music player has been uh, created successfully. And now I want to use the IC15 to uh, play the playlist I created before. Uh, here I choose the Kenny's playlist and I click play. And you will hear the hear the song. Okay, and if if you want to stop this music, you could just click the stop button. It's very easy and and convenient. Okay, and uh, for the next important feature is uh is the alarm right. <clears throat> uh, the same method is used for alarms. Uh, first of all, you need to upload, uh, you could upload some customized audio in the alarm songs. Uh, you could upload TTS or recording uh, into the alarm songs, and then you need to go to the emergency uh, module. And by default, the dispatch console have created some uh, default emergency playlist here for you, uh, such as alarm, fire, tornado earthquake, this kind of uh, disasters. And you could uh, select your uh, devices to use the alarm feature. Uh, here, I could just uh, use the emergency maybe. Oh, so it's too loud, just like that. If you use the uh, alarm feature, the volume of these uh, devices will be uh, automatically uh, adjust to uh, uh, to a loud space <coughs> uh, to a loud sound. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the next feature. It's about the tasks. Okay, here you will see the uh, tasks bound button on the left navigation bar and you click it, you could check the, uh, such as old tasks, uh, today's card tasks and uh, some tasks uh, logs. <clears throat> and here we create a new task here. Uh, for uh, 
for the trigger tabs, you could uh, set it as the immediate tab, uh, uh, the timetable trigger or the dial number trigger. Uh, if you choose it as the immediate trigger, uh, this task will be uh, performed at once. And uh, if you choose the timetable uh, triggered, it will be perform uh, performed uh, by your timetable. And uh, if you choose the uh, dial number triggered uh, task, um, uh, you could your, uh, uh, such as M100, uh, and you set a specific number for it, and uh, you could just uh, use this fast key to trigger this uh, this task. Uh, here I will take an example uh, on the timetable trigger task. Okay, and uh, for the timetable trigger task, you could set uh, one solve tab or uh, repetitively, uh, trigger. Uh, uh, here I want the task uh, date from uh, May the 1st to May the 31st. And you could also add holidays during this date, uh, such as I want to uh, set the holidays from uh, the 1st to the 5th. <clears throat> And uh, during these days, the um, task will be not uh, operate, uh, performed. And the next one is the uh, specific time of these days. You could set as just from nine o'clock to uh, 10 o'clock, okay. <clears throat> And uh, you could also choose the uh, the days of this uh, this date, such as I just want to uh, play on workday. You could just uh, set it played on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And next, you will uh, choose the audio tab for your devices, such as you want. You could set it as uh, music. TTS record or alarm. Uh, I uh, here I said uh, Kenny's music play a uh, playlist, and the play mode you could set as default order, uh, shuffle or times, and you could set the volume of the devices you want to, uh, run this task. And next you will uh choose some devices such as I, if I only want to IC15 to do this task and uh, uh, or I just need to select this device. And you could just click the, the save button to save the, this task. <clears throat> okay, and uh, this is the uh, task module of our IP audio uh, dispatch console. Uh, let's move on to the next feature <coughs> is the uh, telephony, fe uh, telephony feature. <coughs> uh, uh, our, our IP audio dispatch console, uh, we also support some uh, telephony features uh, such as on the, uh, such as the call budging, the call split, uh, the monitor and the whisper. Uh, such as the call barging. Uh, this is a feature that allows a user, user to join in on uh, some, uh, an existing phone call and the call split, split feature will allow our users to disconnect other people's uh, ongoing calls by force. And the next one is the monitor uh, feature can realize real-time monitoring of specific extensions. And we also got uh, the Whisper uh, feature. The Whisper will allow our users to listen to some others call conversation in real time, and uh, it will uh, allow to, uh, allow to uh, speak to him in private. 
and it also support the uh, meeting team uh, meeting feature. It will allow uh, different extensions uh, to join in a conference room uh, for uh, discussing.